President, colleagues of the Senate, I would rise in opposition to this amendment. Uh, one of the reasons why we have this here today, well, it's two reasons. We can get to that later on here. But uh, the, the Baldwin case was referenced earlier on. And I do believe uh, my colleague from Polk has good intents here in what he's trying to accomplish. But I would submit to the body here that the Supreme Court uh, got it wrong on that particular case. And what we are trying to do is put this genie back in the bottle. Uh, from the Baldwin case specifically, uh, the court notes that inclusion in Godfrey, the Iowa Constitution can sustain damages remedy without prior action by the Iowa legislature does not mean Iowa courts have no role in crafting a remedy. Then they go on to use the due care standard, which at best they're a little bit nuanced there in how they describe this. Uh, normally we think a due care objective good faith has more nuanced and reflecting several considerations. Factual good faith may compensate for legal error and factual bad faith may override some lack of clarity in the law. Other jurisdictions have opened the, cons opened the doors to direct constitutional damages claims done so within the framework of existing st uh, state uh, tort statutes. Folks, the reason why the plaintiff's bar wants to maintain the due care standard because they actively have cases out there right now that they are trying to litigate in front of the Supreme Court to mitigate and whittle away what was believed to be the law of the land on the qualified immunity. This amendment codifies effectively the Supreme Court running roughshod over what we have tried to establish here to, or that has been established through case law the last few years. And I would submit to this body that we need to exercise our legislative oversight, legislative responsibility, and put qualified immunity back to where it was initially intended to begin with. Uh, going further here in the amendment, 